Hey everybody, Trina here with Primal Life Organics. Um, I've gotten quite a few uh, requests lately about the makeup and if I could do a, another makeup demo. So that's what I'm going to do right now is show you how to apply um, the makeup by Primal Life Organics. I am bringing up my Facebook page so I can follow along. Um, I just want to make sure that, let me refresh my page. Um, I want to be able to follow along and see if anybody's got questions. So give me one second while I bring this up and then I'll be able to monitor questions if you have them. So if you do have questions while I'm doing this broadcast, there it is. Um, please make sure to type your questions in the comments and I'm going to try and monitor those and answer them as I go. Okay, so here we go. Um, first of all, with the makeup, I always like to show you how I prep my skin. So I, I'm going to wash my face with, I've got the Ocean Face Wash today, and then I have the toner, which is the Infinity Toner. And then I, I like to use the moisturizer in the morning. A lot of times I love the way it sets my skin for the makeup. It preps my skin for the makeup. I'll give you some tips on how to use the makeup um, as, as I'm going through the process. I also have Quiver with me. Um, we've offered Quiver. It's um, a handheld device that you can use in the shower or as you're washing your face in the evening. Um, it's waterproof. It helps pull out oil, um, dirt. It helps to deep cleanse your skin. It vibrates your pores. If you think about a sonic, it's a sonic vibration. So if you think about a sonic toothbrush and how it deep cleanses, that's exactly what this is. It's a silicone head. You don't ever have to replace the silicone head. Um, and I'm gonna use this, because I love using this to wash my face. Um, you can also use this to increase whatever you put on your moisturizer or serum, increase the absorption. It, it absorbs much deeper into your skin. So it, this does two things, um, super cool. So you can still pre-order these. Um, I'll put the link um, later on in the comments. It's uh, quiverfacialspa.com, but quiver is amazing. And I named it quiver because it literally lets you, it, it quivers your skin. It quivers your face. When you're done, it's continually vibrating. So I'm gonna show you how uh, I go through washing my face um, all the way through to applying the makeup. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got my bowl of water here. And this is a good time, I have to tell you. So I got back from vacation about a week ago. On vacation, um, of course, I was eating things that I wouldn't normally eat. So my skin is kind of broken out. I'm still healing my skin um, from eating too much dairy and probably some other things. I didn't eat bad, but when you're not, when you eat really clean all the time and then you have one or two things or a couple things, my skin just completely broke out. So that's actually really good for the makeup demo too because people want to know how it does with acne. Um, it doesn't completely cover, but it will, it will, allow the, the color that you're putting on to fade it a little bit acne so uh, i'm going to it's a good i guess it's a good thing that i've broken out on my face um, a little bit while i'm doing this demo so i have my water i would normally either be in the shower or i would be washing at the sink so this is my ocean face wash so with the face washes you only need a little bit i wet my hand down and i'll apply a little bit of my face wash You can see that the face wash does lather a little bit. If you're going to um, just use the face wash, that's what you would do, and then I rinse it off. I'm going to use Quiver so I can deep cleanse. I, especially since I'm really broken out, I try to use Quiver um, at least once a day, if not twice a day. It's super easy, and I'm washing my face anyway, and it feels really good, and I have to get my lips. I apologize because it feels so good. This helps to exfoliate as well. So, uh, it's a really simple, easy tool to add to your daily regime, and um, it improves the absorption of whatever you put on your skin. It helps to open your pores. So if you think about it, opening pores, it's going to help deep cleanse and help penetrate anything that you put on your skin. So all those expensive moisturizers and serums that you use can actually penetrate deeper and um, work much better. This also, is um, helps to tone your skin as well. So uh, it does do a little bit of um, toning as well. So, uh, and then I get underneath my eyes just a little bit. All right, so you can see, and I did put foundation on this morning. To rinse it, to, to clean quiver, it's waterproof. You can dip the whole thing right in water. Um, you, you simply just wash it off. 
All right, so I'm just gonna rinse my face off so that I can get all of my um, cleanser. That was the Ocean uh, face wash. And Ocean has uh, dulse seaweed and it also has Himalayan sea salt. Both of them are really, really good for your skin. They're very nourishing, very healing. Um, the salt sometimes makes people wonder how that does, but if you think about when you go to the beach and how your skin kind of perks up when you go to the ocean, that's exactly what it is. Himalayan sea salt has so many trace minerals and trace vitamins and things like that in it. It's really, really good for your skin. The other thing with my face washes is that they're not going to strip off your natural oil. So your natural oil can stay in place. Your natural oil is very protective. It's protective against bacteria is also protecting your skin from losing too much moisture. Your skin is designed to hold on to some moisture that helps to, to keep your skin looking younger and keeping your skin looking plumper inside. What happens when you're using some face washes that have SLS and other types of ingredients that dry your skin out, it strips off that layer of your natural oil. Your protective natural oil is gone and then you open yourself up to bacteria that can cause acne and also the drying effect. It can dry your skin out. Um, and then it's very hard to rehydrate your skin if you're, if you're constantly using things like water, alcohols, um, SLS, things like that that actually pull moisture from your skin and strip your natural oil off. So I have taken my makeup off. The next thing I'm going to do is use my um, face toner. Um, you don't have to use toner. A lot of people love it. So it's one, two, three, really three spritzes is all you need. Um, and I just let that sit for a second. And you don't want it to completely dry on your skin. You want it to be just slightly moist on your skin when you apply your moisturizer or your serum. Um, if you're buying a face package from me, the face packages come with a face wash, a toner, a moisturizer, and a serum. You don't have to use both a serum and a moisturizer at the same time. You can use one in the morning and one at night. Um, they do, they, they both hydrate your skin. They both have nutrients and things like that in them. You, the only time I suggest using them both at the same time is if your skin is super dry or you've been outside um, either in the wind, uh, in the sun, and you, you know your skin needs extra moisture. So then I would say you can Use one, wait 20 minutes, and then use another. But for the most part, every day, you would just need a moisturizer or a serum in the morning, and the other one at night is how you would use it. Don't forget, if you guys have questions, please um, comment below, because I'm trying to keep an eye on them. Uh, let me refresh this and make sure I'm not missing any um, questions as we're going through this. Sometimes my, um, my feed does not update, and I want to make sure. Oh, okay, so there we are now. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is put some of my Beyond Moisturizer on. This is what I really love to use um, in the morning if I'm going to be putting makeup on because I love the way it sets. So the moisturizer, um, it really about all you need is this much. It's a tiny amount. And then um, I'm going to show you that's probably actually too much. I've left some on here because that's actually too much. So I usually just warm it between my fingers and then a little bit on my cheeks and then I put the rest on my forehead and just kind of massage it in. Gently massage it. Your skin on your face is very delicate. And um, you don't want to just start like massaging it so deep. You don't want to rip the fibers inside or the collagen or anything. So you really want to just be kind of gentle with your skin on your face. So the other way, since I have quiver here, the other way that you can use quiver, once I put my moisturizer on my serum on, and I can feel the heat from quiver in my face. So Quiver is really easy. It has a button right here. That's the on button. It always turns on to a, the medium setting, and you have a negative or a positive. So you can decrease the, the vibration or you can increase it. Um, if you increase it, you'll hear it go up a little bit. Um, decreasing it will take it down. There's two different sides as well. So the smaller silicone brush side is the one I like to wash with. And then the touch pad up here, on the top is more for troubled areas. So if you have a acne spot or areas where you've got wrinkles that you wanna try and diminish, you can use that touch spot and just hold it there. The other side has a little bit bigger of the bristles and they're very soft. It's um, made for delicate or for um, sensitive skin. All skin types can use it. So for the moisturizer, I'm just going to 
use quiver to go over everywhere that I put the moisturizer. And don't forget, so quiver's helping to open those pores up as it's vibrating. The sonic vibration is helping to open the pores. So the Beyond Moisturizer that I just put on my skin can penetrate deeper into my skin faster. So I actually get a better, um, better effects from my moisturizer when I'm using Quiver. All right, so it feels so good. I hate to stop. To shut it off, you just push the button again, and then you're good. Um, one charge, it has a USB cord. It just charges in the back. It's super simple. It charges on the back. One charge will last approximately 200 washes. So if you're using it once a day, um, then that would be approximately 200 days you can go. It's very convenient. I took it on vacation with me and used it every day when I wash my face. That's my new routine is to use that as I'm washing my face every day. All right, um, so getting to the makeup, I wanna show you guys, um, there's two ways you can apply the makeup. So the makeup itself, I have foundation, I have concealer, cheek stain and lid stain. So I'm gonna show you different techniques that you can use, but the, uh, they all come as a powder form. So the difference between this and mineral makeup is the fact that the color from mineral makeup comes from minerals, like iron oxide and, and things like that. The problem with the mineral makeup is that the minerals sound really good and really healthy and really natural, but the problem is, is that they have to wash those minerals. And when they're washing the minerals, they're washing them in chemicals. And those chemicals are skin irritants and they're toxic. And that doesn't get washed out of the minerals. So unfortunately, when you're putting your makeup on, those minerals, uh, and those minerals are what brings out those really vibrant hues, the bright reds and the bright oranges and the bright blues. Um, so when you're using natural ingredients, so all of my makeup, the colors come from food or they come from like herbs and um, flowers. So for instance, my cheek stain that I'm gonna apply today is beetberry. So the color for this comes from beets and cranberries and that's it. So the color is a little bit different. Using it's just slightly different than you would use in mineral makeup because mineral makeup has minerals that have very vibrant colors, whereas food, um, the colors are can be vibrant, but they don't go on the same. So um, once you get used to using this makeup, it's super simple, it's super easy. In fact, I ran into someone, Naomi, I don't know if Naomi is gonna watch this, but hey Naomi, at Paleo FX in Austin, Texas a couple months ago, she's been using the makeup for two, I think years now, three years now, and she loves it. Um, she, she said it's very simple to use, is once you learn how to use it, what's right for you, it goes on just like regular makeup. So there's just a slight learning curve most of the time, but once you get it, you got it. So I'm going to show you, and you can use it dry or you can use it wet. I always tell people experiment with both ways because they both work and it just depends on what works better for you or what you like better or what's more convenient for you. So the first way that you can use this, this is the, um, the foundation. Okay, so for the foundation, there's two ways. You can use it dry, so I'm going to show you, and this is simply, um, I usually put, if I'm gonna use it dry, and this is probably too much powder, but I'm doing this for more for the camera effect. Um, we have what we call the Kabuki brush. This is a great foundation brush that I sell. Um, it works really good with the foundation. So you would just put a little bit of the foundation right on the brush, and then because the makeup, my, um, Beyond Moisturizer hasn't completely soaked into my skin. My foundation is going to pretty much work with my moisturizer. So I'm just doing my one side of my face right now so that you can kind of see. So putting the foundation, I'm gonna put a little bit extra so you can kind of see what the color, what it looks like going on and then blending it in. It gives you, uh, it, it it evens out your skin tone. Okay. You can see my lovely breakouts from my vacation have just faded just a little bit. So there you have, that's how you apply it with the dry. Um, I always recommend using some sort of applicator when you're doing it, it just goes on much better. The wet technique, so I have, normally I would do a couple drops from the sink, but another tip is to fill up an old dropper bottle with water. 
then you know exactly how many drops of water you like to use. You just have to keep in mind that every scoop that you use, unless you have your own scoop that's a measuring scoop, every scoop that you, you put in here might be a little bit different. So your water might have to be adjusted. But once you know the consistency that you like, um, the consistency of the foundation itself, the wet technique, then you're, you can usually finagle your water and figure it out. So I'm going to put a scoop of the foundation might put just a little bit more so we can see on camera. So I put a scoop of the foundation on the lid. I, I use the lid because it's super convenient. I mean, you just put it right back on and this, you always have it. Some people will use a small bowl. Some people will actually mix it right in the palm of their hand. But regardless of how you do it, um, you do the same thing. You would put a little bit of powder and then I'm going to put a couple drops. One, two, three, there's about five drops of water. I'm going to see what this looks like. Um, I might have to add more. So this is too watery. If it's really super thin, you want the consistency of foundation that you're used to, like what you're used to buying. So this is really watery. If, it, if you put this on your skin, it's not going to give you much coverage at all. So what you would do is just add a little bit more foundation to it and you don't want it to be too thick if it's too thick and it dries um, it's going to dry chalky looking you're going to have like white so you want to make sure you get the right consistency so this is more of the right consistency it's not thick and clumpy it's very creamy feeling and that's the consistency that you want to go for so I'm going to put and you can even see when I put it on it doesn't look watery. It doesn't look like you're seeing through it. Um, it actually looks kind of creamy. So you can see that. Okay. And then I'm just going to rub this in. I'm probably going to have to do both sides because I put more than I needed for just doing half my face. Okay. So. You just rub it in. I just rub it in with my hand. When you have a moisturizer that you put on or a face serum and it hasn't completely soaked in, that will help with the evenness of the foundation. Another tip that other people have used is that they'll put a drop of a face serum of some sort of oil, either one of the face serums, the Beyond Face Serum, or even olive oil or something, right when they put in the mix. So they'll mix it with the water, a little bit of oil, and the foundation color. So that's how some other people do it. The other tip that I need to tell you is that you want to make sure to wipe this clean. You don't necessarily need a wet towel. I usually just use something dry and it cleans it out, but you just want to make sure if you're using the lid, you're just going to clean it and then close it up and you're good to go. All right. So the next thing I want to do is the um, cheek stain. So you can do this two ways as well. You can put it on dry. The thing with the cheek stain, I want you to know, is that with the cheek stain, the color intensifies with moisture or with water. When you think about beets and when you boil beets or any kind, anytime you make a tea, when you put it and mix it in something that's liquid, the color comes out and intensifies. So when you, if you're going to use this dry, initially, you're not going to see much color on your cheeks. So I usually tell people to walk away, wait five minutes, come back and check. Because the color as your natural oils comes through your skin and blends with the color of the cheek stain, it will deepen the hue of the cheek stain. Not drastically, so you don't have to worry if you go out and you don't check yourself that you're going to look have too much color. But it will intensify as um, the oils mix from your skin. So I'm going to just do a little bit uh, with with the uh, cheek stain dry. And you may or may not be able to see this on camera just because it will be a light application. But I'll do it on this side so you guys can see a little bit better. So I just put a tiny bit on my brush and then um, dusted it on. This is just like you would normally apply your blush, however you would apply it. Um, if I would wait about five minutes, you would see it a the color come out a little bit as it's mixing with my skin and it's mixing with the oils that are naturally being produced on my skin. I'm going to show you though, if you do the wet technique, because this is how I love to do it. 
Um, a lot of times I just wet the brush down. So I will dip my brush right in my safe water or run it under my water. And you don't want it so soaking wet. You just want it damp. You want it your bristles damp. I'm going to show you what I mean when I say the color comes out when you use uh, water. So you can see, let me add just a little bit of the cheek stain so I may have had too much water. Okay, there you go. So you can see that there's powder in the middle and then where it's touching the water, the color has intensified. Let me spread it around a little bit so you see that there. I'm going to show you two on my hand here. I've, I've got way too much. If I put this on my skin, on my face, it's too deep. But I'll show you how to um, lighten it up. So you can see the color is much deeper when it's wet. So this is why I called it a stain. Because, and, and don't be afraid of the word stain. The stain color it comes from the color. But in the color, don't forget, this is beets and this is cranberry. So there's a lot of nutrients that are in that color as well. They're not, there's no chemicals, there's no toxins. It's strictly beets and, and cranberry. So the color is coming from that. So when I put this on my skin, and this is still a little dark, but I'm doing it more dark than I normally would, just so you guys can see it on the camera. So when I put this on, um, and, and I didn't even use all of it, and I have more than enough. And what's left on the brush is really what I can adjust my color with. And I let this dry. This will take probably a minute to two minutes before it's completely dry. But um, as it's drying, sometimes what I'll do is take a paper towel or a tissue and just kind of blot anywhere where I don't want the color. As it's drying, keep in mind that this is made from food. So there might be some particles in, in your color that stay on your skin. So once it's dry, all you have to do is take your hand or take a tissue and wipe those particles off. And then they, they just brush right off. It's no big deal. And then what you're left with is just a stain of color on your cheeks or wherever you put, put it. All right. So next is, I don't know, do you guys have any questions? I don't see any questions. So I apologize. Sometimes my um, Facebook doesn't completely update. Um, so if there's questions, I'll come back and monitor them. Um, but nothing is showing up on me, on my end. The next thing I want to do is the, um, I want to show you guys how to do the um, lid stains. Because you can do them two ways as well. What I have with me is the charcoal. And the charcoal is like it sounds. It's um, almost like a, a gray, a darker gray color. And you can do this two ways. So I, I have two brushes that you can get. This is more of um, putting it on your lids. And then this one is more of an angled brush and narrow. So you can actually use this as a wet, wet it down and use it more like a liner. So I can show you both ways for that as well. So this is the charcoal color. You can see that. Let me grab my scoop. So I'm going to do the wet technique first and then um, just to try and line my lid a little bit. And then I'll show you with the other brush how you can um, apply it as a lid color dry. So I'm just going to wet my brush down, kind of get rid of some of the water, and then um, dab it right. And you can probably see on um, here as well how the color um, darkens. And you don't want it too watery. Same thing with your, um, as with the foundation. You don't want it too watery. You want it, um, con the consistency thick enough that it's going to not be watery. Otherwise, if it goes on water, you're not going to have much of a color. When this dries, it's going to dry a little bit lighter than when you're applying it. So it's hard for me to see what you guys are seeing, but you can kind of see the color as I'm putting it on. Um, and then to do it dry, I'm going to dip this in here because my lid has the wet. 
but to do a dry, it would just be like you normally are using um, a lid color. And sometimes I'll use the back of my hand just to dab it so I don't get a lot of the powder, excess powder, and then you can just apply it to your lids. Keep in mind that the color that you're going to get from um, the makeup is going to be a little bit more of a lighter color than you're, you might be used to with conventional makeup. Like I said, the color is coming from foods um, that are natural. So the color is going to be a little bit lighter, a little bit natural, more natural. Um, the foundation itself um, blends in very well. And picking a color, um, I tell people, you know, if you're purchasing foundation right now that's a medium warm or medium, you're most likely going to be a medium with our foundation as well. I do have warm and cool for the foundation. So if you're not sure if you're a warm or cool, there are some tests that you can take, some quizzes. You can either Google my, you know, what is my skin tone, warm or cool skin tone. Or if you go to the foundation page on my website, I have the links that you can click and it'll give you a quiz as to whether, um, Sometimes if you look better in certain colors, you're more cool. And if you look better in like oranges and reds, you're probably more warm. Um, and then there's other tests that you can do. You can look at your wrist and your skin and things like that. So that'll help you decide whether you're warm or cool. We also do, um, if you're afraid of purchasing the, you know, what color, I will exchange it for one time without a cost, understanding that, you know, color, you know, it's difficult to show on, um, you know, on the website. It's also difficult for you to pick colors sometimes. So if you're concerned about that, don't be concerned about that. If you buy the wrong color, just let us know. Is it too light, too dark? Um, how, how does it work for you? And then we can send you um, a color that would probably be a better fit for you. So um, let's see. And then today is the last day of the sale. Or no, tomorrow's the last day of the sale. So if you're watching this live or you're watching this on on uh, July 20th, the sale goes through tomorrow, Friday, July 21st, um, for 25% off. Use the coupon code BEAUTY17, that'll be up on the top up there in the text as well. And then I'm coming back later if anybody's interested, around 3 p.m. Um, Eastern time. Liz Wolf is joining me from Real Food Liz, Eat Your Yolks, uh, she's a best-selling author. Um, and she's going to be joining me. We counter or co-produce the vitamin C serum. So we're going to be talking about the vitamin C serum, how it's different from other vitamin C formulas that you might have seen or be used to. Um, and we're just going to be talking about stuff like that. Um, feel free to join us, ask questions. If you have any questions, we'd love to be able to answer them right there on the spot for you guys. So um, if anybody has any questions or comments, please um, type them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to come back and try and answer those for you. Um, you can also find us at PrimalLifeOrganics.com. You can also email us at support at PrimalLifeOrganics.com. So thanks for joining me, guys. Oh, the one thing I did want to show you guys, the last thing, is the concealer. So the concealer, which is perfect for me right now because I'm breaking out. So the concealer comes in light, medium, and dark colors. And uh, this is the medium right here that I have. Yes, that's the medium. And the consistency is it's pretty thick. Um, usually what I do is, since I have my breakouts, I'm just going to cover them, um, put a little dab. And you can either use your finger or a cotton uh, Q-tip um, or something along those lines. And um, normally I would do this before I put my, um, my blush on. I'll use my concealer. The good thing, what's really cool about the makeup is that it's clay-based. So all of the base and all of the um, foundation, the concealer, the cheek stain, and the listings is clay. Clay helps to detoxify your skin. It also is very healing for breakouts. So if you do, if you are prone to acne or you do have breakouts, putting cover up on or putting the foundation on is actually trying, helping to detoxify those breakouts and helps them to heal more quickly. So it's actually very healing for um, acne prone skin. So keep that in mind if you uh, break out or have any skin irritations or issues. So um, I think that's all I have for you guys. So thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, type them below. Don't forget to like, comment, tag, and share this with someone you think might um, enjoy hearing about the makeup. It's a great alternative, and so many people that have not used makeup in years 
are able to use makeup again because I wasn't willing to put chemicals on my skin, neither were they. So until I created a solution um, using food, they were without. So thanks for joining me and have a great day.